It feels like every company these days is pushing out more and more affordable options for the sky astrophotography and ZWO is no exception. When they released the first cooled pro version of the IMX585 sensor along with the monochrome variant later on, it was a very welcome addition to their lineup. But earlier this year at NEF, ZWO gave us a preview of something new, the ASI 585MC Air, and now it's officially here. Announced together with the ASI 2600MM Air, which I've also tested and reviewed. If you're interested in a more advanced setup, don't miss that video. I'll link it up here down there. The 2600MM is definitely aimed at more advanced users, but this 585MC Air is something else entirely. It is an all-in-one system ideal for beginners or DSLR users transitioning to a dedicated cooled camera. I have it right here with me, already installed and ready to go. I've been using it for a few days now, so I've had some time to get to know it. Tonight I'll show you what it's like to use, then we'll look at the images that it produces and I'll share the key things to consider if you're thinking of picking one up. Let's get started. My name is Lutza and you're watching The Space Koala. So how is the ASI 585MC Air different from the existing 585MC Pro? The key change is that the Air model now has the ASI Air control system built directly into the camera. ZW first introduced this all-in-one design with the 2600MC Air back in September 2024, and now they're expanding it with two new models. This means you're not just getting a cooled camera, you're also getting an integrated guide sensor, the ASI Air control system, built-in Wi-Fi, a powered USB hub, and more. It eliminates the need for a separate ASI Air unit uh, or any other control unit, a guide scope, a guiding camera, and all the extra cables that connect those components. The camera's main sensor is the Sony IMX585 sensor, a popular choice recently adopted by all major astronomy brands. It offers approximately 8 megapixels with a 4K resolution and 2.9 micron pixels. The secondary sensor used for guiding is the IMX220, the same one found in the larger versions of the Duo and Air cameras. Everything you need is built right into the camera body. If you're using a ZWO AM5N or AM3 mount, like this one. The camera also connects to it wirelessly via Bluetooth, so there's no need for a USB connection between the camera and the mount either. And coming soon, ZWO is expected to release the EAF Pro, a wireless battery-powered focus motor that's fully compatible with the air cameras, removing the final cable to the focuser. Physically, the camera follows ZWO's smaller form factor for deep sky cameras with a compact 78mm diameter. On the back, you'll find the integrated USB hub, and in the box, you'll find all the standard ZWO deep sky camera accessories, a couple of USB cables, a couple of DC cables, two adapter rings to arrive to a 55mm back focus, and a couple more adapter rings, a camera bag. If you're not adding anything like a filter wheel or rotator, just stack the two included spacer rings to hit the standard 55 millimeter back focus. That's what I've done here. And of course, if you're adding other components, you can just swap out those rings to suit your setup. It doesn't look great right now, but the forecast says that it should clear up later tonight, so I'll be able to show you how this setup performs under the stars. But first, let me show you the gear that I'm using. I really think that this little camera will be perfect for um, travel or minimal setups where space and weight matter. Here, I've paired it with my SCAR SQA55 telescope mounted on the ZWO AM3. I'm not even using a focus motor because if you've seen my reviews of this scope or other similar telescopes, 
you'll know that I really don't think one is necessary for small optics like this one. If you nail focus once, it is gonna stay put and it's not going to shift. Okay, so as soon as it gets dark, I'll pull their line and I'll find a good target. The night is short, so I don't expect to collect a ton of integration time it should be more than enough to give you a solid idea of what this camera can do. Okay, so it is nighttime. I have polar lined and started imaging. Uh, tonight's target is the North American Nebula. I thought it was gonna clear up and it did eventually but first it actually started raining so um, actually it is past midnight it is one o'clock and I just started imaging like half 20 minutes ago um, so the night is really gonna be very short but the important thing is that I'm gonna get some images so far everything is going quite well so what I did is actually I took a few very quick pictures in RGB without any filters of the stars and then I put in a narrowband filter, a multi-band narrowband filter, a 6 nanometer ASCAR color magic hydrogen and oxygen filter because I know that everybody wants to know how the integrated guiding works with a narrowband filter and it is actually performing really, really well, despite the fact that the sky here is really not so good. Um, I'm guiding with one second exposures, but if I really pushed it, I think it would also work with the half second one. Um, so it is going quite well and let's see. So long story short, I'll keep shooting until the clouds come back. So it is now the next day and I'm back at my computer. As you can see from the time lapse, I was shooting through clouds for most of the night, but the telescope ran all night and I ended up with just under three hours of data. I've downloaded the images and I'll show you how they look. In addition, I also captured a dark frame and a bias frame. If you've seen my other videos on calibration frames, you will know that I don't usually recommend using darks with these latest CMOS sensors at all. So for this one, I only use the high quality bias of 200 frames to calibrate both the lights and the flats. And I actually only took the dark just to show you what it looks like. Uh, there are two hot pixels and otherwise it looks exactly as you would expect it. No amp glow or any issues. And then the bias also looks exactly as expected. Here's the stacked image I captured using the dual band filter. This is the stack without any sort of processing. I used the narrow band filter just to see how the guiding would work through it. And it worked great, actually. I initially mentioned guiding at one second intervals, but it also performed well at half seconds. At least with this super wide field setup, there were plenty of stars for guiding at all times. And so let's have a look at the final processed image. Um, so the stars were taken without the dual band filter and then they're blended with the dual band filter image. The rest was shot with a standard six nanometer dual band filter and then just color balanced to an HOO palette. We're not here to judge image quality. It is a small amount of data, but the camera performed exactly as expected. Very solid results from a modern CMOS sensor. Now for the important question, should you buy this camera? I can't tell you if you should buy the camera, but what I can tell you is that if you're looking for a camera with this sensor, there are definitely so many options on the market. It's become one of the most popular sensors out there. It's very convenient, a great quality, and also affordable. And the good thing is that even though there are so many options, each of the companies has done something 
unique. So ZWO is no different in this regard. They're the only ones offering an all-in-one camera design. So I think the ASI 585 MC Air is a good option, especially for anyone who doesn't already own Deep Sky dedicated gear. At $799, you're getting everything that you need to get started. You can build a complete imaging setup just by adding a telescope and a mount. You don't need a separate guide scope, a guide camera, an off-axis guider, or a whole mess of cables to connect all of those. That makes this a really great choice for anyone starting out or whoever wants the simplest setup possible. So as I already mentioned at the beginning, this camera is aimed at beginner astrophotographers or people transitioning from a DSLR to a dedicated astro camera. It also raises the question, of course, then who is this not for? Well, if you're not happy using the ASI Air as your control system, then this just isn't the right camera for you. Also, keep in mind that this camera is very small with a very small sensor. So if you are looking for a wider field of view or need a larger sensor for your setup, you're better off checking out maybe the 2600 MC Air version, which uses a much larger APS-C sensor, though of course it comes at a very different price point. As for having to use it as an ASI Air camera or not, yes, technically you can control it with external software. It works with any program that supports ASCOM. I've done it. If you saw my original video last year on the 2600 MC Air, you'll remember I made it work via Alpaca, but that's, in my opinion, more of a workaround for occasional use, like if you need it once a year for a specific tool. You really shouldn't buy this expecting to use it as a general purpose wireless camera with all those external pieces of software. It's not what it's made for. This is designed to be used as an all-in-one unit, hassle-free. It could be your main rig or a travel setup, like the one that I had to, to test this, essentially. It is ridiculously portable. By the way, I've linked the camera itself and then all the other things that I've used for that portable system down below, so feel free to check it out. Uh, long story short, it is an excellent choice and a very cost-effective camera if you want the sensor on your telescope. You really do get everything you need for a complete astrophotography rig at a great price. However, it does come with limitations. Its biggest strength, the whole all-in-one self-contained system, can be its biggest flaw if you're just not happy with using ASI Air as your control system. I think it is a very convenient little camera that I'd even consider using as a secondary setup, even for more advanced users. Let me know what you think and if you're planning to give it a try. Thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to taking a few more pictures with it now that we have the new moon and hopefully better weather this weekend. I wish you clear skies.